Yo, what's up? It's Jimmy on from Glitchy Thumbs. We're back with another video. We're going to be creating character 2.4 in Blender. If you haven't seen the last videos, I created character 2.3, the genie, which is what I thought of for that character. I drew it in Procreate. I created a 3D model in Blender. I created a simple jumping mechanic in Billbox. So check those out. We're going to be checking out character 2.4 today. We're going to see what changes I've been making in my workflow process. Let's go. Character 2.4 is this little character right here kind of looks like a salamander some sort of reptile abstract version of it i started with a plane scaled that down i extruded all the way to the right you might notice the reference is a little bit crooked it's definitely best to straighten it out otherwise your 3d model is going to be sideways like that i adjusted the reference this just makes your modeling so much easier if everything is straightened out you just have to follow the reference with the plane extrude to the far right extrude to the far left select these vertices at the bottom and extrude down select these vertices at the top extrude up you can see i'm just starting with a bigger plane now and then just making loop cuts on both sides that way everything's aligned already and we don't need to worry about anything else other than the dead space and the vertices around the reference if you need to make more loop cuts you can do so in between any of the existing ones and then just align the vertices around the reference while deleting any faces that you might not need sometimes when you delete faces you're left with this little area that that you need to fill i decided to just wield the vertices together using the target wield that way we avoid any inconsistencies in our model and then i'm just pretty much pulling down the vertices to match the reference as if we're wrapping this character around the sketch that's pretty simple to understand in comparison to the previous way when i was doing this i try my best to simplify as much as i can so that i can focus on creating as many characters as possible using this one method i do change it in my current characters i've been working with cubes and subdivision modifiers more that's something you'll be able to see in the future videos whenever i get to recording them and if i feel like i don't need certain vertices or edges i'll just wield them together to another vertice or edge that way it will keep everything organized you can see i'm straining out edges as i'm aligning i definitely had a hard time thinking about how to do the feet for the salamander i deleted those faces because i couldn't think of a solution during that time to do that i selected these end edges and extruded out so that we get a nice straight polygons that i can organize and move these vertices into place this is a much better shape for the salamander's feet next thing i need to do is extrude these end vertices to create the tail i don't think salamanders have tails actually they do have tails but it's not rounded like this i feel like it's a little bit more pointy this tail is like a platypus's tail or a beaver tail my characters are going to be like a hybrid of certain creatures i guess because that's probably what i was thinking of the time i think of abstract frankenstein chimera type animals that's what makes them unique we're pretty much done with the reference that was pretty fast considering i usually take a long time trying to create the shape around the character i can see some improvements now we need to add some width to character 2.4 the salamander i'm using the mirror modifier you guys know this method already if you don't refer to the previous videos i've explained it very thoroughly once we have our 3d model of character 2.4 the salamander i move it to a new collection so i can keep that organized i select the top edges do an edge slide so that we can have some curvature and also do that for the bottom of character 2.4 we also need to do an edge slide for the feet. I'm selecting specific vertices to get the shape that I want first before I actually do an edge slide across the entire model. I'm really trying to just get some sort of shading for this character. That's why I use the edge slide a lot. I'm adjusting the feet so that it's a little bit more symmetric with the right side and the left side. I'm just moving the vertices into place, but also leaving some sort of area that it looks like he has some toes. I kept that nice and square with a little bit of curvature. We also need to do the front leg as well. This is all just visualization. You have to imagine your character in a 3D space and also the curvature. 
around your character. I'm doing this specifically so that we can texture paint later on with ease to have a different color for the main color and the curvature, which would be the shading part. You guys can visualize that if you look at it. And if you've been watching the previous videos, you know that's how I normally color or shade in my characters. And once we have that, I pull out the edge loop, this time by rows, starting with the top row and then pulling down so that we get this nice rounded shape. For the front of the face, I need to move these vertices in to create more of a salamander's face. I'm just eyeballing everything and looking at the reference to kind of imagine what it would look like in a 3D space. Normally, we're supposed to have a front view of the reference so that we know how each perspective looks like. But I just drew one sketch and then everything else I just visualize and just go with the flow with how I think character 2.4 will look. It was just experimental. There's really no right or wrong answer because you are the creator. You created this character. No one else can say how it's supposed to look other than how you imagined it in your head. That's the beauty of it. Even if someone says something about it, it really doesn't matter what they think because you're just creating for the sake of creating. That's the beauty of art. Everything is subjective. You can do anything you want. Various people will have their own opinions. At the end of the day, I really think your opinion matters the most on what this character actually did for you and your business or just for your enjoyment. If you're creating characters to be happy, if you're creating characters and it brings you joy, then it brings you joy. If you're creating characters and it's helping you bring in revenue, then that's helping you bring in revenue. That's just as simple as it gets. It doesn't have to be complex. It's just like a creative outlet to help you keep creating. If that's something you have in mind, and that you want to do. I like to create things and sometimes these things are out of the ordinary. That's the beautiful thing about it. I just do random things. Whatever comes to mind, just like this video, whatever I'm recording is whatever I'm recording. I have no script normally. I just talk and that's the content for today. Sometimes I talk about very interesting stuff. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I go off on a tangent. But those tangents are pretty cool because I talk a lot about my experience with game development or 3D modeling or anything else that pertain with my business or even just stuff that I think about, like different ideas and characters that I want to work on or revise. I think those are all important things that I should record so that I can refer back to. I think some of it is helpful to a lot of people because of the way I think. Not many people think like this, I guess. We just put it that way. Or people have trouble putting themselves out there. That was something that I had a hard time doing when I was first creating content. I really didn't like to be in front of the camera because it was a little bit weird at first. But after you put out a lot of videos on the internet about different things, like all my previous games that I worked on, all the knowledge that I learned about game development and all that stuff, you realize that it's really not that scary as long as you're making sure all your content is educational, it's positive, it's inspiring, it's just helping bring something to the table, helping people out with whatever you learned, then you should have no issues posting more content on the internet, which is what I'm doing with all these characters. Now I want to just create and see what other cool things I can come up with and see if I can explain a lot of the things that I've been doing that have been pretty quiet on the internet so far. I haven't really posted as much because I've been focusing on this project, making sure I get the processes down, my workflows down, having no road bumps so that I can continue to create. And so far, so good. It's taking me some time, but I think I'm doing a pretty good job trying to make a comeback, which isn't easy if you haven't been posting for quite some time, but that's okay. Everything takes time and you can't always be perfect. I'm trying my best and my best is all that matters. And we're pretty much done with blocking out character 2.4. The eyes were simple. I just added the UV sphere as usual. Now we can get to UV unwrap and I just have to make a new texture. I've already marked the seams down the middle for the body and then also around the eyes. Click into UV editing, turn on UV sync selection. Just rotate this first island for the body and align it into place. Do the same for the eyes. The UVs for the eyes is definitely an inefficiency that I should have solved a long time ago. I'm constantly redoing this part 
where I have to rotate the UVs so that we can get a straight UV aligned with the mesh on the right. I should definitely export some sort of 3D model of the UV sphere and then have it unwrapped already. I still haven't done that. And I'm already creating a lot of more characters. Definitely should do that. I just gotta make sure I talk about it so that it gives me a reminder. To have the eyes aligned like this, it's definitely going to be just one view that we'll be able to use them in, which is like a front view, which is just the view that you're seeing right now. I'm separating the UVs for the body because I'm planning to draw the mouth on one of them i believe and then keeping one for the solid color that's usually what i do if you see me scaling down one of the uvs even though i can stack them it's because i plan to draw on one of them and then the other one i just keep a solid color that's pretty much it for uv unwrap if you want more of a detailed version of this let me know in the comments but also i've explained it multiple times with the previous characters that's why i mentioned in the previous videos that i might speed through a lot of these videos just to speed up the amount of content that I'm going to be putting out so that I can get to more characters which are going to be more in depth and brings us more into the advanced stuff that I've been getting into. My characters get a little bit more complex and I want to be able to explain that but I need to get to those videos and there's like a bunch of characters that I'm doing. So if you don't like the format of the videos so far starting with character 2.4 and you prefer something more like the previous videos let me know in the comments i'll definitely take that into consideration now we get to texture paint and we need to switch to the 2.4 texture otherwise you see the previous character's texture that looks actually not bad i like to see different patterns from the old textures it gives me different ideas but this one didn't really do much for the salamander and i need to apply the material to all the objects and then simple color the body in with gray color the eyes in with white that's already our base color that i normally go with and then we need the pupils as always i do need some set of eyes i should maybe create some different eyes like a whole bunch of them into one blender file and then i can just pull any eyes that i need for any future characters some of these eyes can be reusable and eyes are definitely a reusable 3d object you just need to scale them before i paint on the objects i need to flip the normals for the body that's a little bit too big for the pupil the gray eye actually <laughs> looks pretty cool where one eye has a small pupil the other one has a big pupil maybe i will consider that as maybe an enemy or a different character where one of their eyes is different from each other we're just going to go with our simple pupil in the middle for both sides and then get rid of these black specks unless you like the black specks which i don't i don't know why blender does that sometimes it's such a weird thing to happen i grab the circular edge loop around the outer part of the pupil scale that in so that the pupil is not as pixelated that makes it very smooth that actually makes the pupil kind of stick out if you're just looking at it from a front view, you don't notice, but from a side view, you can definitely see it, but that's not really an issue. Not many people are going to be looking at the character that up close anyways. And for the mouth, you just need to go in x-ray mode and just trace similar to the reference. Try to get as best as you can. If you go super slow, you'll be more accurate with your line work using a mouse. I prefer to use the Apple Pencil. I actually haven't used a stylus and a drawing tablet before. I don't know why, I just never bought one. I never really needed one. Kind of just rather use whatever I have and not keep buying things if I don't need it. I don't really do much drawing on the computer anyways. I mainly draw on my iPad. That's about it. Since this is a 3D object for character 2.4, I need to connect the mouth on the front side as well. Otherwise, that would just look weird. It looks fine from the side view, but from the front view. Yeah, this is what I mean with the eyes that we'll only be able to use this character in one view because if we use it in this view, you're kind of missing the view of the character. It looks weird. That's what happens when you're creating 3D models that's mainly going to be used in more of a 2D space which is what this character is probably going to be from left to right only, but that's okay. Now that I look at it, the salamander should actually have four legs, but this one only has two legs. That's a little bit odd. I thought I created four legs for him. Maybe I didn't. I thought I did. I'm definitely doing something here. 
I'm selecting the faces on the leg. Oh, and I'm actually shading in this bottom area with a darker gray to give it some shading for the bottom of the character and then some for the bottom of the tail as well. I didn't realize he's a two-legged salamander. It's kind of funny. I could have sworn I made him in four legs, but maybe I didn't. I probably just speeded through this as quick as possible because I know this character isn't really going to be a main character. It's probably going to be some sort of supporting background characters of some sort. He'll make a cameo of some sort in a game. This is the problem that I deal with is when I draw things in, I'm not thinking two steps ahead. This was the problem that I deal with all the time where I actually draw in parts of the face and then I end up shading the under part of the character. That actually gets rid of the parts of the face that I drew in and now I have to fix it again. I definitely do do your coloring and your shading first, making sure that's the final texture that you're going with before you actually draw in different features like the mouth or the nose or different patterns into your character. I made sure to save the texture at this point because I'll be undoing a lot. When you do that, the texture will disappear if you didn't save it. And I'm just fixing the mouth. This was pretty straightforward for the salamander. I'm just drawing in some of the feet. Super simple. These are prototype characters, so don't expect too great of a job as I'm practicing <laughs> making these various characters. I'd rather practice on all my abstract characters and get them practically wrong because I'll actually learn a lot about Blender. When I get to the more complex characters, I won't have any issues because I've already learned all the things I needed to learn so that we have no issues when the complex characters come around. Everything would just be super easy because I've already done all the hard stuff and got all the hard stuff out of the way. That's pretty much done for texture painting. And then brings us into rigging with Rigify. And since character 2.4, the salamander is floating in the air like this. Definitely should drag him down to that red line so that he's actually touching the floor. Otherwise, he's going to be floating in your game engine, and that's not good. You're going to have to fix that anyway, so might as well just fix it now. You always have to add the single bone and delete it. Click add standard, add the basic spine, select it, drag it down, grab the joints to align it to your character. If some of these bones are rolled to a certain angle, you can always adjust them by clicking the bone icon and then adjusting the degrees in the roll. And that makes it nice and straight. Move the spine towards the middle and then add the head bone. The head bone usually comes with the neck bone you have to connect these two i actually never really know when i should have the head be upright or on the side like this i just go with the flow to me it doesn't really make a difference but maybe it does for more complex characters and then you need to connect the endpoints of the spine and the neck bone using the cursor to selection and selection to cursor method that makes it simple we also need a tail for this character. I feel like a lot of my characters have the basic spine, the head bone, and then the tailbone. They've all pretty much had that so far. At least that's what I remember from the videos I've been recording. Everything looks aligned when you look at it in this view, which is the front view. But when you go to the back part, you can see that our bones aren't even straight. Make sure to do that for your characters. You're not really done aligning the bones just yet because they all are still misaligned on a different perspective. These bones create your rig, which help deform your characters correctly for animation. I'm finding that if you have very specific bones, like the shoulder bone or chest bone or the pelvis bone, that actually helps Blender know where to deform your characters correctly on the 3D model. Otherwise, it's going to look super lopsided in your game engine that you're using. At least that's what I've noticed, that when I stretch my characters and they don't have certain bones to hold them in place, then it starts looking weird. I'm sure you've seen that with some of my characters. I think it should be in one of the videos. I forget which one, though. I've actually been reusing a lot of my bones for my previous characters because a lot of them 
have the similar bones, like I mentioned. I just have to delete certain ones for specific characters. That just makes the process a little bit more simple because then I don't have to always add new bones. I can just build on top of the previous bones that I've worked on. I do forget what bones is which because of how it was renamed. And then we add the eye bone, which is the basic super copy. We also need the leg bones for the front leg and the back leg. The leg bone is very useful to keep your character stationary and grounded. Since the salamander only has two legs, that makes our job so much more easier. The heel bone is gonna be the width of the foot. Once we have that in place, since the back leg is pretty much the same thing, we can just duplicate that leg bone. That makes our life so much easier. And then rename your bones so you know which bone is for which. You can keep them the same if you want, if it doesn't really bother you. I don't think it makes a difference. It's more so for being organized and bringing clarity for what that bone is going to be used for. I don't do much of this for my current characters, actually, because when you start getting to the complex characters, there's a lot of bones and having to rename a lot of them. It's just tedious. I do simple animations anyways. I can tell the difference between the different bones just by looking at them. And then we just need to parent the specific bones, the eyes to the head bone, the thigh to the spine bone, and then the tail to the spine bone. I'm just randomly selecting some of these bones because it's all the same to me on where I'm going to parent them. Trust me, when you watch my videos, you're going to realize that a lot of the stuff, I'm really going with the flow with everything. I don't think I'm like a professional at this. I just do things to learn and then just improve and get better than the last time I used this process. That's just how I've always done things. I just do things hands on. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, figure out why it doesn't work so that you don't have to worry about that next time. And then just continue to learn other things that you didn't learn and just keep adding to your skill set. The layer names for this is pretty simple is going to be the same as always which is why i've been reusing a lot of my bones because it skips this process of having to make the layer names because i've already done this multiple times we have the head head tweak spine spine fk spine tweak the leg ik leg fk leg tweak tail tail tweak and eyes you just move each bone to their own separate layer and then color coat them with five and four and if there's a third bone use three that's pretty much it and then move the different bone samples to their own layers which coordinates with our layer names i agree this process is tedious but trust me it gets easier and easier as you progress and get familiar with each bones in the rigging process go into pose mode to move the tweak layer and the fk layers for each of the bones a lot of the rigging process is organization i feel like that's where most of the time is going to be spent other than animation, but that's a process on its own. We're pretty much done with rigging. We just need to generate the rig now. Bring the rig in front. And that's our final rig for character 2.4, the salamander. Go into object mode so you can parent your character to the rig. Back into pose mode. So now you can test your rig by moving the different layers. With the leg bone, like I mentioned, keeps your character stationary like this and grounded. That way you can lift the spine bone and it won't lift the character off the ground. We're pretty much done with rigging with Rigify now. This is way easier to explain now that I'm already a few characters in the process. I've cut down the time for all the problems that I ran into. Hopefully this is getting to a point where it's easily understandable just by listening to what I'm talking about as I'm going through the videos. If it's not, you can always go back to character 1.1, which is ghosts, and you can see the entire process of how I started and how complex it was in the beginning because I didn't really know much. I was going through my blender journey from the beginning well not really from the beginning but it was from the beginning of my character set videos you can see how difficult it was to explain everything as thoroughly as possible now that i've gotten to this point everything is much more simple to understand it's very straightforward if you think 
it's still not straightforward, let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to work on that. I'm just trying to make this as educational as possible, but also get through as many characters as we can without having to repeat the same things over and over. Otherwise, every video is going to be the same and I want each video to serve its own purpose to help me learn more, but also improve my content so that my content also gets better. At the end of the day, that's all that matters as long as I'm making progress progress, creating these characters, using them in a game mechanic. Eventually, hopefully I get to that full game that I've been wanting to work on. I haven't gotten there yet, but I've been working on a few prototypes and mechanics. So far, I'm happy with all the things that I've built and learned and created. Hopefully you guys been enjoying this process because I am. That's all that matters at the end of the day. There's a portion where I'm removing the heel bone in the rigging portion for Rigify. I think I'm experimenting on the positioning of the heel bone. I think that's what I'm doing because if we move the heel bone back and then generate the rig, what does the rig look like? I know I've had this issue with the leg bone or with the foot layer where it's not actually touching the ground. I thought it had to do with the heel bone because I do have this issue with a lot of my characters and I didn't know exactly how to fix it, but it works either way with moving the feet anyways with how it's positioned. That's what I'm doing here, trying to move the legs down now to see if we can get that red layer to be more closer to the ground. This is something I've just skipped past for my current characters because otherwise I'll spend way too much time trying to get it to work correctly. You can always revise your rig like how I'm doing with your bones. There's no issue. You can just do as many times as you want just to get the correct rig that you want. This just improves the movement for your characters when you do this. The rig is actually aligned correctly in place. I think moving the leg bone actually solved that getting that red layer closer to the ground. This is what I mean by your character being grounded when you're using the leg bone to rig. When you grab the torso and drag it up and down, you can see the leg is actually bouncing in place while keeping your characters grounded. If I lift the torso up, it doesn't actually lift the character off the ground because your feet are still grounded. That's what these red layers are for the foot. That's why I've been using it in a lot of my characters, just to keep them grounded. Even if they don't have a foot, if they just have a body, the leg bone just keeps anything grounded. This sideways heel bone is what I've had issues with in the past. I definitely skipped past that. I do need to go back, which is why I like these videos. I get to go back to what I've done to see if I actually fix the issue. I forget things that I actually fixed and the things that I actually just skipped past. For the heel bone, I'm testing to see what happens to the rig if I position the heel bone like this. I have one for the front, which is the standard, how I would keep the heel bone. For the back, I have it positioned differently, and then we can compare and contrast an A-B test between the two to see the effects that it has on the rig. It pretty much looks the same actually. If you don't like how your rig came out, you can always undo and then it will get rid of your rig. And then you don't have to worry about deleting the extra files that it creates. That was the annoying thing that I had to deal with having to generate the rig, but also delete the leftover files that were left and then having to remove the vertex groups. I avoid that now by just pressing undo and then just regenerating the rig from the different bones again. If you don't like your rig, just press undo, fix your bones and then generate the rig again. If you don't like the rig again, repeat that process. I was really trying to get this heel IK layer to be positioned in the back because it allows you to lift the back of the heel correctly for like a walk cycle if you plan to use that for your characters. But I guess I don't find a solution for it. It's very useful for a humanoid character to have that. I'm deleting the heel bones now to see what happens when we generate the rig without them. There's an error when you remove the heel bone. You definitely have to keep the heel bone with your leg bones. So those are some things that I test as I'm doing various things in Blender. That just 
helps you get a better understanding of the different processes. We're rigging right now, so you got to understand what bones you can use and what bones you can remove. These are the leftover files that are usually left with your rig. Even if you messed up on the rig, it still comes with all these files and you have to delete them. At least I delete them to keep everything organized. You have to remove the different vertex groups that came along with the rig. That way, when you regenerate any new rig, you don't have to worry about the leftover files. Since I didn't save this Blender project, I can just reopen it again to revert back to our previous bones that had the heel in it. This is the importance of the backup file. If you do mess up on anything, just make sure you have a backup. That way you can experiment as much as you want without having to worry about whether you messed up your actual file. Also in Blender, there's different rigs that you can use. There's some animal rigs. This is an example that I'm pulling up, which is the wolf rig. This is already like a preset and you can use this for your characters. You just have to align the bones correctly into place. I was looking at the leg bone just to see the difference between the rigify sampled bones in comparison to the wolf preset bones. The wolf doesn't have a heel bone which is interesting, but the leg sample does. So sometimes I'll experiment and try to study the different bones of these animals that Blender provides already, just to better understand how they built it and how I can probably use these for my future characters. This is also a four-legged creature and the bones are pretty much similar there's a spine bone, there's leg bones, and I guess there's an arm bone, and then there's face bones. But all of these bones have a specific type, and you can see that type going into pose mode anytime. I think I was trying to take the leg bone from the wolf preset, but I couldn't figure out how to bring that leg bone to character 2.4, the salamander. And I was trying to delete all the surrounding bones. But that's actually a separate armature from the one we've already created, but I would have to somehow paste it into the current bones we already created. I don't think I figured that out just yet on how to combine bones from different presets. I actually should research that because that's going to be useful for my future characters. I don't think I figured it out, but at least I don't remember the process because I normally just use my own presets and then just add bones within it, but I never figured out how to take bones from other presets and bring that bone into the presets that I'm using. That's something I should definitely learn. That's a good thing to learn too. There's a texture paint redo. I guess I redo the texture for the feet. I mean, it looked perfectly fine in the first variation. I guess I fix the mouth too, unless this was already part of texture paint already. That brings us into animation for character 2.4, the salamander, go into pose mode and then grab the torso and I move it up and down. I always go with idle animation as my first animation for any character. That's the first thing I think of for an animation. That's usually what I work on for this salamander. <laughs> Since he's grounded to the floor, we can actually just get that simple animation of him shaking his butt. Add a second screen for the action editor to show us the summary of all the rig layers that we're gonna be using to create our animation. This makes everything straightforward. So we know which rig layers we're moving, any keyframes we need to remove, we can, or we can hide and unhide different layers to see what different animations we can create. If you want to revert back to your original pose position, you just click pose, go to clear transform and click all and it'll revert back to the original pose position. Otherwise, you're going to be animating with the current pose position, which isn't ideal. I'm separating the rig from the character again so that I can create a backup of the body. I'm not sure why I did that. Oh, and I created this backup so that I can join the eyes with the current body. That makes everything easier to animate with our current rig. If everything is just one 3D object. Then build box, it just makes everything easier to simplify as much as you can for the 3D objects. This animation is pretty good if I grab the torso and the chest layer and move them together. You can see character 2.4, the salamander is bouncing in place. That's a pretty cool animation just by itself, I think. I really like simple animations that get the idea across. That definitely gets the idea across for the idle animation. So I keyframe the location and rotation at zero. 
the keyframes aren't showing in the timeline on the bottom, but they're showing in the summary in the action editor. So it's definitely saving the keyframes. The way to fix the keyframes in the timeline on the bottom is to press home on the keyboard. This is probably where I didn't figure that out just yet because I'm moving the keyframes in the action editor. That's confusing for me having to explain that. On the 10th frame, I'm moving it down by negative 0.05. I duplicate the keyframes from the zero to the 20th frame because that brings the salamander up by 0.05 which brings it back to the original position and then at the 30th frame i move it up by 0.05 this is pretty much normally how i animate my character is i'll either move it up and down by 0.05 or 0.1, just something simple that I can remember to replicate across multiple characters. But also you just remember to do each rig layer on its own. That way you can create some pretty complex animations just by focusing on specific body parts first. And if you don't like the animations that you came up with, you can just delete the keyframes and start over from the beginning. If you can't remember your own process, definitely should write down what you moved for each frame, like if you moved it by 0.05 in the 10th frame, then I would definitely write that down. Normally I just remember most of that. If I need to refer back to, I could just go back to my videos, just like I'm doing in this video. This time I'm just duplicating the 10th and 20th frame to the 30th and 40th frame. So it just goes up and down and up and down and up and down. I do the same for the 50th and 60th frame. That's as simple as it gets for the idle animation. To save this animation within Blender, you should click that shield icon. And it'll create some sort of fake user. I think that's what it's called. I don't know. But it saves that animation within Blender. Otherwise, I think it gets deleted and there's no action of it. At least that's what I remember. I know I had missing animations before for some of my characters. That's because I didn't click that shield icon. I definitely didn't study that part. I never really needed it. We're almost done with the animation. The next animation I'm working on is the jump animation. That's definitely a new animation where I start experimenting with a different movement because normally I just create an idle animation and I use that with the current character and I bring that over to BuildBox. That's what I've been practicing, but I guess this is where I start experimenting with more animations because I'm more familiar with the process. I guess it started with character 2.4, the salamander. That's what that shield icon is called because at the bottom it says action jump animation will not be saved. Create fake user or stash in an LA stack to retain. That's what the shield icon is. It's a fake user and it saves your animation. That's normally what I do after I'm finished creating my animation. I just click that shield button. For the jump animation, we have to think about how this character is going to look when it jumps off the ground. So I keyframe the current position at frame zero. At the 10th frame, I move it down by negative 0.05. That's because in real life, when you're jumping, you kind of bend your legs and squat down first. At the 20th frame, you're lifting your legs back up which brings us to the original position. At the 30th frame, I move it up by 0.05 because now we're actually leaping off the ground. We're just focusing on the torso and the chest right now just to see how that movement is. This is what I do. I'll play back just to see if I got the movement correct for this position of the body. When you're finished with the movement for the torso and the chest and you like how that looks, then you move over to the foot IK layers so that you can start lifting the feet off the ground to go with your chest and torso layers. That's how I animate my characters. I do things one by one. Now you just follow the movement of the character based on how it moved with the torso and the chest and try to get the push off with your feet to match up because we're creating the jump animation for the foot keyframe the current position at zero around the 40th frame is where his foot should be lifted off the ground this doesn't have to be accurate you can always adjust this remember i lift the foot off the ground by 0.05 i play the animation just to see how that looks the foot is lifting slowly off the ground while the chest and torso is moving up that's because there's a lot of space between the 0 and 40th frame so it slowly moves that layer based on how you moved it i deleted the keyframes at the 40th frame i'm duplicating the keyframes on the zero frame to the 10th frame and the 20th frame so that 
the legs are stationary all the way up until the 30th frame. When we actually get to the 40th frame is when the legs should quickly lift off the ground. That's how you get a more sudden animation instead of it being a slow movement. You can always adjust that. Hopefully that makes sense. If you want the feet to lift off a little bit earlier, you can move the keyframes on the 40th frame back to the 20th frame. That would make the feet lift off earlier than the chest and the torso. This is all experimental. You have to experiment with each frame to see whatever you like. This would be unique for your character. So it's gonna be very different on how you do the lift off, but this is how I did it for character 2.4, the salamander. I actually delete the keyframe animations for the foot layer. If you get confused by the rig layers, you can always hide and unhide them. Normally, I just keep everything on just because it doesn't really bother me. If it bothers you and you want to just focus on a specific layer, you can just hide everything else. But the leg bones and just focus on the leg IK. This helps you understand what the IK layers are or the FK layers are or the tweak layers are. You can see the difference between the two when you do this. That's something I don't really study too much of, which I should. I just select a specific rig layer that I like and then just move them to create an animation. And that's about it. I haven't dug too deep into the entire process just yet because I'm still experimenting and learning about the entire process. I'm just trying to do my best with whatever knowledge I know first before I go into more depth with everything. This time I'm just grabbing all the layers that are on the screen and then record the current position at frame zero at the 20th frame, move them all up by 0.05 and see how that looks for the animation. If I don't like the feet lifting off the ground at the 20th frame, then I move those keyframes to the 40th frame. And then I experiment moving those keyframes closer to the zeroth frame. So you can see the leg lifts off as soon as the animation starts. And then I delete that. This is all just me experimenting. You should definitely do that with your characters so you can understand more about how the animation layers work. It's not as scary as it looks you can just do some simple things and focus on getting hands on first. If you go into complex animations right away, that's what's going to make your life more difficult. You can do some simple stuff like I am and you don't have to worry about too much. And I think I decided to go back to the idle animation to add on to that animation. I'm grabbing this tail layer to give this tail wag. That's the animation that I'm adding to the idle animation, which is just going to be like a sideways tail wag back and forth left and right that gives it a little bit more of a unique look to the idle animation this was simple at the 10th frame i just rotated by 10 which brings it to the right at the 20th frame i rotated by negative 10 to bring it back to the original position at the 30th frame i rotated negative 10 which brings it to the left at the 40th frame rotated by 10 back to the original position i duplicate the 30th and 40th keyframe for the 50th and 60th frame that gives it a little nice wag back and forth that's how you would do your animations just adding on different layers on top of your completed animations that makes your simple animations into more complex animations you do it slowly and slowly and it becomes a very unique different animation per character and all this adds up to your skill level. If you start out with simple animations, you'll eventually start progressing to adding on to your animations. That's just gonna take time. And you should definitely do that if you want to create some cool animations for your characters. Once I finish with the auto animation, I think I go back to the jump animation because we need to finish that. Or maybe I didn't finish the jump animation maybe i didn't figure it out at this time in the video because it looks like i'm experimenting with something different i'm moving the neck layer to deform his head a little bit now he's like a seal salamander a sealamander it's a pretty good nickname for character 2.4 i'm creating this neck stretch as a third animation i guess i'm not sure why i did this but it looked cool at the time I actually call it the head block animation we're pretty much done with the animation for character 2.4 the sealamander i add the outline to character 2.4 
for the salamander or the sealamander. Now that actually looks like the character from the sketch. I always feel like the outline really helps most of my characters. At least it makes it look identical to the sketch that we were using to create it. Now we need to export the FBX. We go to file, export FBX, check selected objects, check armature, mesh Z forward, uncheck add leaf bones, export the FBX. Organize the FBX in your folders. And that pretty much concludes character 2.4, the salamander or the sealamander with the blender workflow that I've been trying to improve upon. Hopefully you learned a little bit more about the rigging process and the animation process for this video. The leg bone really helps keep everything stationary to the ground. If your animations requires your characters to move in place, but not lift off the ground. Also animation, you can always start with something simple with one of the layers, animate them however you like, and then select another layer to add on top of your animations. Hopefully you come up with something unique that's different for your characters, like I did for character 2.4. Um, I think that's about it. So far, the process is getting more simplified. I can definitely see that in the videos. That's about it. Check out the next video where we're going to put this character into BuildBox. I don't think I came up with a mechanic for it. So we're just going to be dragging it in to test out the animations that we created. So check out the next video to see what we did in BuildBox. Let me know what you think so far about everything that I'm recording. Whatever is on your mind, leave it in the comments. Like and subscribe if you like this video. Appreciate your time. See you next video. Peace out.